This is Ken from the NetBeans documentation team. In this screencast, I want to demonstrate some of the features in the IDE that can help you when you develop HTML5 applications. In this screencast, I will show you how the IDE provides tools for helping you debug and test JavaScript files. Debugging JavaScript is automatically enabled when you run an application in the Chrome browser with the NetBeans connector extension installed, so to debug an HTML5 application, you only need to set a breakpoint in the file. Support for the JS test driver server is also included in the IDE, enabling you to easily run unit tests on JavaScript files using the Jasmine testing framework. You can configure JS test driver to run unit tests against a variety of browsers and specify the JavaScript libraries, scripts, and tests that you want the IDE to load when running the tests. When a test fails, you can use the debugger to help you find the source of the problem. For this screencast, I will use one of the sample projects that is bundled with the IDE. In the new project wizard, I select the AngularJS Phone Catalog Tutorial Sample Project. The sample has a number of JavaScript files and uses Angular JavaScript libraries. After I create the project, I run the application to check that it works and confirm that Chrome with NetBeans integration is selected as the target browser. When I click Run, the application opens in the browser. The yellow bar in the window tells me that the ID in the browser are communicating and that debugging is enabled. I now open one of the JavaScript files and click in the left margin to place a breakpoint in the code. In the breakpoints window, I can see that there is one active breakpoint in the project. I now run the application again and the page reloads in the browser. I click on one of the phone models to bring up the details page and that is when I hit the breakpoint. I see that the page is not fully loaded and in the editor of the IDE, I see that the program counter is now at the breakpoint that I set. If I hover the cursor over a variable in the file, I see a tooltip with some details, and when I expand the tooltip, I can see more details, including the current values of many of the strings. I can also view the values in the variables window. I can step through the script if I want, but I will just click continue and I can see that the page in the browser now finishes loading. I disable the breakpoint that I set because I now want to run some unit tests. To run the unit tests on the application, I will use the JS test driver server. Support for using JS test driver is bundled with the IDE. From the services window, I open the dialog box to configure JS test driver. I locate the jar for the server that I downloaded and specify the browser that I want to run the tests against. In this case, I will only use the Chrome browser with NetBeans Debugger. I now need to create a configuration file for JS Test Driver. The IDE provides a wizard for creating the configuration file in the new file wizard. The wizard has an option for automatically downloading the Jasmine test framework libraries that are used with the JS test driver server. When I click finish, the configuration file opens in the editor. The configuration file contains the default server address and location of the Jasmine libraries and unit tests. I now need to modify this file so that the Angular libraries that are used by the application and the JavaScript files that will be tested are loaded when I run the tests. Now I right-click the project and choose Test to run the tests. The IDE opens a new tab in the browser which is captured by JS Test Driver. I can see in the green bar that the server is ready and waiting to run the tests. In the IDE, I click the notification to open the test results window and I can see that all the tests passed. In the JS Test Driver Server tab in the output window, 
I can see the server status, and in the running JS unit test tab, I can see the output for each test. I can also see the output in the test results window if I expand the test results node. To demonstrate how I can debug a test, I will modify how the phone list is sorted by changing the value of a variable so that the list is sorted by name rather than by age. Now when I run the tests again, I can see that one of the tests failed. I can see the failure message in the test results window. In the running unit test tab, I click the link to navigate to the line in the test that failed. If I set a breakpoint in the line and run the test again, I see that the debugger hit the breakpoint in the unit test. When I hover over the variable, I see that the value is now name and the expected value in the test is age. I can also open the evaluate code window and evaluate the variable. When I run the evaluator, I see the value listed in the variables window. By debugging my test, I can see that if I want the test to pass, I need to either fix the source code or update the value expected in the current test. This simple demonstration showed some of the features available in the IDE for debugging and testing JavaScript files. Thanks for watching and be sure to watch our other screencasts about using NetBeans IDE to develop HTML5 applications.